Aiming in Fortnite is harder than in 99% of other games. Therefore, the players with the best aim are truly outstanding. And in today's video, I'll be going over the best aimers throughout every Fortnite season ever, starting with Chapter 1, Season 1. In this season, you were considered a good aimer if you hit more shots than not. But even with that said, there were a handful of streamers who stood out with much better aim than everyone else. And the one that immediately pops to mind as the best one was High Distortion. HD was one of the first players to ever drop high Elim solo versus squads gameplay. He was also able to consistently win these games on stream and set kill records. And the one attribute that made him good enough to do this consistently was the same. I think the reason behind HD's early success was thanks to his extremely long professional career as one of the best Gears of War players in the world, where he notably also played alongside Nick Merckx, who could also be considered one of the best aimers in the early seasons of Fortnite. Now hopping over to Season 2, the best aimer was hands down Ninja. In Season 2, he was playing more than than anyone else, consistently putting in 12 hour days on stream and just completely outplaying the competition thanks to the work put in. One extremely memorable clip from him during season 2 was the 1 HP revolver clutch, where he takes down a full squad in a few seconds thanks to his incredible aim and movement. Just like with High Distortion, Ninja had a long history in professional gaming before Fortnite. He played PUBG, H1C1 and Halo at the very highest level. And thanks to that, he understood what it took to become one of the best. The super impressive thing with Ninja was that you could always expect consistency when tuning into streams. It didn't matter if he had an awful day, had slept for 3 hours, or had the odds totally stacked against him. His lowest lows were still higher than 99% of players' peaks, and that's what separated him from everyone. He was just always able to win games and drop high alims. Going into Season 3, Fortnite was truly at a turning point. This was a season when the game really exploded in popularity and everybody started talking about it and playing it. So being the best aimer of the season was a massive deal. And of course, when talking about Season 3, the best aimer and arguably player was Tfue. Tfue and Ninja are kinda like the yin and yang of the early days of the game. They're very similar but completely different at the same time. They both were incredible in Halo, H1C1 and PUBG, and also were two of the best players in Fortnite. Fortnite. The difference, however, was that Ninja had this high-energy, showman-like playstyle, whilst Tfue had a no-nonsense, highly calculated and clinical playstyle. Together, they represented the two sides of Fortnite's ridiculous rise in popularity. Tfue was a quiet, unstoppable player, and Ninja was the vibrant, larger-than-life entertainer. Both left major marks on the game, and their dynamic made the early seasons of the game even better. And after the immense success of Season 3, Epic had a bit of a challenge out of them in terms of making season 4 even more fun. I remember when this season came around, one thing was super exciting, and that was the fact that Epic was actively talking about bringing competitive tournaments into the game. And only 16 days after season 4 was released, we got the first in-game tournament called the Solo Showdown. The Solo Showdown was an event where you could win V-Bucks if you placed within the top 100. The rules were simply that you played 50 matches in the in-game mode and got a point-based score based on how you did in those matches. The better you did, the more points you got and at the end of the event, the points would be counted up and Fortnite's first leaderboard would be released. At the top of the leaderboard was an OCE player by the name of Ruthless. Now, Ruthless was a console player, and there's no doubt that he was incredible. However, due to the fact that Ruthless played his matches on console and against console opponents, it's hard for me to really know how good of an aimer he was against other super good players. The player under him on the leaderboard, however, who went by the now familiar name Sait, played on PC and on the second hardest region of NA East. Unsurprisingly, Sait was also arguably the best competitive player at this time, much thanks to the fact that his aim was unmatched. So for season 4, the pick is yet again easy, and it goes to Sait. Stepping into Season 5, tons of people from all around the world started their summer holiday and were ready to grind harder than ever. And this season was the start of actual major tournaments. With Epic Games giving out more than $7.5 million through the span of the season, players had every incentive to play and practice. The season marked the dawn of true competitive Fortnite, and one player who seized the opportunity was Vivid. Vivid was actually someone who got invited to play the summer skirmish by someone else who had performed really well in the solo showdown. And when stakes were higher than ever, Vivid rose above the rest with his incredible aim and massive brain. In addition to that, Vivid was calm under pressure. His ability to land game-changing shots in tense situations led him to become arguably the best player of Season 5. Vivid dominated throughout the season, securing multiple 
multiple first place finishes in the summer skirmish. These wins not only cemented his reputation as the best aimer of season 5, but also as one of the most dependable competitors in Fortnite's early competitive scene. For anyone watching, Vivid made it clear. Good aim and a big brain could win you tens of thousands of dollars and respect from the entire community. As we move into season 6, Fortnite's competitive scene was hitting new heights, and one name that stood out among the rest was Mitro. Known for his lightning fast mechanics and near pitch perfect aim, Mitro quickly established himself as a force to be reckoned with in the EU scene. What made Mitro's aim so remarkable wasn't just his ability to hit shots, it was how seamlessly he combined it with his aggressive playstyle. It seemed like he never thought he could die in a match, often diving straight into pro players' boxes and coming out on top because of his incredible aim both with shotguns and SMGs. Every engagement felt like it was on his terms, and the opponents almost always also understood that quite quickly. Mitro's dominance in competitive events during the season was a testament to his skill. He regularly showcased unbelievable eliminations in scrims and tournaments. So these weren't just items against some random casual players. He truly was one of the most exciting players to watch at the time. While other players like his teammate Majin excelled in building and editing, Mitro's unmatched aim made him the standout player of Season 6. For Season 7, Fortnite was evolving rapidly, with the competitive scene becoming more intense and the skill ceiling reaching new heights. This was the season when Mongrel, a young prodigy from Europe, truly began to show the world what he was capable of. Known primarily at the time for his inhuman mechanics, Mongrel's aim was nothing short of extraordinary. What set Mongrel apart was his ability to combine his lightning fast builds and edits with pinpoint accuracy. You see, a lot of players were becoming mechanical demons, but lacked a lot in the aim department. When fighting, Mongrel's aim with shotguns was unrivaled. His aggressive playstyle, coupled with his ability to hit massive shots, made him one of the most respected players at the time, and for good reason. Season 7 was a breakout period for Mongrel, as he began making waves in scrims and when streaming pub stomping. His highlight-worthy plays consistently showcased his elite aim and mechanical insanity, drawing the attention of viewers and competitors alike. It became clear that Mongrel wasn't just a rising star, he was shaping up to be one of the greatest aimers and players in Fortnite history. By the time Season 8 rolled around, Fortnite was firmly established as a global phenomenon, and the competitive scene had never been more stacked. This season saw countless players rise to prominence, but one name that stood out for his incredible aim was Aiden, known as one of the best controller players of his time. Aiden's pinpoint accuracy and dominance in close quarters, especially in Tilted, made him a fan favorite and someone you wouldn't want to face if you were a pro. Aiden's playstyle was aggressive and fearless, thriving in box fights and tight spaces, where his aiming skills shined the most. His mastery of the SMG especially was unparalleled. He didn't just win fights, he sent his opponents back to the Stone Age. What made him truly special was how he was one of the very few players who could prove that controller players had a chance in top level competitive play, because at the time, many questioned the competitive viability of controllers. Aiden was truly someone to look up to for every aspiring pro controller player. Season 8 was when Aiden really cemented his legacy, showcasing his incredible aim in both public matches and high stakes tournaments. Whether it was a solo clutch or an explosive squad wipe, Aiden's precision and confidence made him one of the most exciting players to watch and undoubtedly one of the best aimers of season 8. Moving on over to the second to last season of Fortnite Chapter 1, the answer is obvious for who the best aimer was. He wasn't even only the best aimer, he was the best mechanical player and also the best strategically. And the player I'm talking about is of course the World Cup winner Buga. Known for his cool-headed gameplay and perfect mouse control, Buga had aim that turned nearly every engagement into a masterclass for players wanting to learn a thing or two about the game. While many others struggled to keep up with Fortnite's evolving mechanical meta, Buga seemed to thrive, consistently learning new moves no one else was doing at the time, all whilst landing game-changing shots that sent his opponents back to the lobby. What made Buga truly special was his ability to turn precision into dominance. His AR tracking was so clean it felt like his opponents were walking into lasers, and his shotgun plays were perfectly timed to devastate even the best players in the world. I've said this before and I'll say it again, if you're ever to talk about a player who was made for Fortnite, it would be Buga. Everything about his playstyle is optimal, the way he moves, his builds and edits, and of course his aim is just so satisfying to watch. When it came to Season X, Fortnite was insanely chaotic, fast paced and filled with changes that quite honestly even made pro players mad, like the mech for example. But in the midst of this arguably awful season, one player's aim stood out as something to just look up to, and that was Sexro's ability to consistently land max damage pump shots. Sexro's aim was like a human aimbot, he made aiming look effortless. 
Kind of like Puga, but just in another way. His dominance wasn't limited to public matches either. He brought the same confidence and consistency to competitive play. During this season, Sexor's aim was the foundation for him, Macwood, and Young Calc's FNCS win. His aim was actually what turned countless matches for them around. And during heats, he had one of Fortnite's best clutches ever. Unfortunately, Sexor would quit the game shortly after their FNCS win and move on over to Valorant when that came out. And to no surprise, because of his aim, he was able to reach the highest rank of Radiant in no time. Now, Chapter 2 Season 1 brought with it a fresh map and a wave of excitement. And in this new era of Fortnite, Unknown Army quickly made his mark. Known for his aggressive WK playstyle and terrifyingly accurate aim, Unknown Army was the closest thing you got to a player who cheated who actually didn't. What set Unknown Army apart wasn't just his ability to hit shots, it was how he weaponized his aim to dominate close range fights. Using the controller aim assist to its maximum potential, Unknown Army made even the best players look like floppers in box fights. His rapid edits paired with pixel perfect aim turned almost every encounter into a highlight reel. The combination of SMG sprays, AR beams and shotgun shots delivered with flawless precision became a signature, and his plays set the gold standard for controller players everywhere. Unknown Army's breakout performances in tournaments like the FNCS Grand Finals showed that even when it mattered the most, he could have way better aim than any other player on the planet. And thanks to that, he was able to carry stable Ronaldo to an FNCS win. I think that says enough about his abilities as a player. Now, going into Season 2, I really wanted to give the title of Best Aimer to a Keeper and a Mouse player. But as I walked around my house, thinking about who truly stood out as the Best Aimer of the season, one name kept coming to mind. Reet. Reed wasn't just a great aimer, he was the definition of mechanical mastery with a controller. His ability to lock onto opponents with pinpoint precision in chaotic situations was unmatched. In a season where aim was a crucial factor for success, Reed stood out as the guy you didn't want to meet in game. Whether it was a quick 200 pump with a shotgun, or perfectly tracking players as they tried to run away, Reed's aim felt almost inhuman at times. What made Reed's aiming abilities so extraordinary was not just raw talent, but also his mastery of aim assist and incredible reaction time. The interesting part about Reed this season was how a lot of players cried and said he was only good because of aim assist, but what about the millions of other controller players who weren't even close to the level Reed played at? They also had aim assist, but weren't even a tenth of the player he was. One of the skills that allowed Reed to hit almost exclusively max damage shots during the season was his crosser placement and on top of that, he was able to maintain his composure and accuracy under pressure, whether it was during a clutch situation or when streaming in front of thousands of viewers. The reason behind Reed's dominance can be traced to his insane ability to grind and natural talent. If you watched Reed play during Chapter 2 Season 2, you couldn't help but notice the confidence he had in his shots. He was so good to the point where he was truly disappointed in himself if he didn't hit a max damage. For Season 3, I really wanted to highlight a player who wasn't just dominant, but who was quite literally the perfect balance of skill, strategy, and composure. And when I was thinking back on this season, I super quickly thought about Anas. Anas is a very, very different kind of player to anyone else in the world. He is the least flashy pro player in the world, but he gets the job done by simply being scarily confident and having aim better than, so to say, everyone. His precision and control in every fight made him look almost untouchable when watching back his games. Another thing that set Anas apart from the competition is how calm of a player he is. If four players land in Anas' box, you can put money on the fact that he will be just as calm as if he's running around the map farming. And that's what allowed him to often pull off unbelievable plays. And let's not forget his insane consistency in tournaments during the season. Anas wasn't just showing up in one event and fading into the background. He was a constant presence at the top of the leaderboards. Anas defined what it meant to be a player who just got the job done in Season 3, and his aim, coupled with his unmatched calmness and confidence, was the cornerstone of his success. Chapter 2 Season 4, or Stark Season, is the next season we gotta talk about. And this is actually my favorite Fortnite season, and many other people's favorite Fortnite season of all time. So having the title as the best aimer from this one is a big deal. And the player who takes the title here is Mongrel. For this one, there's just no one even close. I'm not sure what was in Mongrel's drinking water during the span of this one, but he was simply unbelievable. When thinking back to Mongrel's streams and YouTube videos, a video of him using the Stark rifle plays in my head. That rifle was made 
made for his skill set. Mongrel in Chapter 2 Season 4 wasn't just good, he was unstoppable. He turned the season into his playground, even against the other best players in the world, and cemented himself even more as one of the greatest aimers Fortnite has ever seen. Watching him play was so fun, because not only was he a demon, but he was also unbelievably entertaining personality-wise. And it's no surprise that so many players still look back on his season and think of him as the very best. Season 5 was an interesting one, introducing sand tunneling, exotic weapons, and a fresh twist on the Fortnite meta. But while the season brought a ton of change, one thing was still undeniable. The importance? Of good aim. And when it comes to exactly that, there's one player who earned the title of best aimer. Bucky. Bucky has always been an incredible aimer. I think people often overlook how good at the game he actually is. You can tell by the way he plays, and more specifically aims, that this guy is truly talented. Another surprising thing is that he is truly insane at making good decisions in Fortnite tournaments. Although when watching his streams, it seems as though he has major room for improvement in the brain department. In a season where AIM separated the good from the great, Bucky showed why he was in a league of his own. And by going back and looking at his results from this season, you can't do anything but respect his grind. Chapter 2 Season 6 brought a primal twist to Fortnite with new mechanics, weapons and challenges that tested every player's adaptability. This season introduced the primal and makeshift weapon systems, which was super polarizing, as some players loved it, whilst others hated it. Many players actually used more time complaining about the new season on Twitter rather than trying to adapt. And that's when one guy rose above the competition and truly established himself as the best aimer worldwide. And that was Day. Day's performance in Chapter 2 Season 6 was nothing short of spectacular. Known for his fast-paced, hyper-aggressive playstyle, Day proved that even with the season's unpredictable weapons, raw aim and supreme confidence still dominated. What made Day really stand out though was his nonchalant playstyle. I remember always being so impressed to see that whether he fought a public player who had played the game for 5 hours, or a professional one who had played for 10,000 hours, he would often use the same moves on both players with the same amount of success. Now I don't think you understand just how good of a player you have to be to be able to do that, but if you have aim like Day, anything is possible. Day definitely earned his spot as the standout aimer of Chapter 2 Season 6, and if he played with the same aim he had in Season 6, he would still be considered one of the absolute best aimers in the world today, and I think that says a lot about just how good of an aimer he was. The second to last season of Chapter 2, Season 7, introduced an alien invasion theme with new mechanics, futuristic weapons, and a rapidly evolving meta. But amidst the chaos, one player consistently delivered performances that left everyone impressed. Arkrim. Known for his calm demeanor and methodical playstyle, Arkrim combined his mechanical skills with a jaw-dropping aim, solidifying himself as the best aimer of the season. Arkrim's success in tournaments especially was thanks to his all-around consistency. He was actually such a satisfying player to watch that he throughout the years has been one of my favorite Fortnite players ever, alongside another guy who we will talk about shortly. What made Arkrim's aim different to everyone else's aim was how he tracked opponents with the pump perfectly, then with top-tier trigger discipline, landed more max damage shots than not. It was also able to use his skill set better than everyone in ultra stacked and laggy tournament lobbies like in the FNCS Grand Finals. To no real surprise for anyone, him, Epic Whale and Rex also won the Chapter 2 Season 7 Grand Finals. Much thanks to all three of these guys' incredible aim and brain. If you look back at this season and Arkham specifically, you'll see that his aim wasn't just great, it was the main reason behind his dominance. He defined what it meant to be a true aimer in Fortnite, and his performance throughout the season remain legendary. Now, for the final season of Chapter 2, the best aimer was hands down Teak, also one of the most underrated players throughout Fortnite's history. He is so underrated, in fact, that you might not even have a clue who he is. During Chapter 2, Teak was Kami and Seti's trio partner, and in Season 8, they played so well together that they were able to take home first place in the FNCS Grand Finals of that season. And in the FNCS Grand Real that was played in the very same season, they were able to play second. Because of these unbelievable achievements, Teak took home $250,000 in earnings. The unique skills that Teak had in order to have the best aim worldwide was his unbeatable awareness. In fights, he never had to flick onto his opponents. He maintained top tier awareness and cross replacement throughout the entire fight, making the shots easy to max when he got the opportunity. In addition, his movement and trigger discipline made him arguably the most consistent aimer out there. During season 8, Teak was truly a player to look up to and learn from. And when talking about the best aimers from that season, his name should instantly pop to mind. Right out of the gate in chapter 3, threats emerged as the 
the best aimer of season 1, and also my second favorite Fortnite player of all time. The story of how Tress became one of the best aimers worldwide is a little bit different, as he has been working harder than anyone on Kovacs to develop his aim, and this grind has resulted in him getting some of the most robotic aim I've ever seen. Throughout this season, aim was more important than ever, because as you might remember with the release of the new chapter, also came a new shotgun, namely the striker shotgun. This shotty was harder to hit with, meaning good aim was heavily rewarded. In addition to the striker, you also had the MKAR, and the threats was simply a demon with it. I can just imagine how relaxing it must have been for his teammates in the season, as threats would always secure more surge than anyone in stacked tournament games. In season 2, the title of best aimer belonged to Venno. Venno has been one of the best players worldwide for the last few years, but watching him play alongside Aqua in season 2 was something else. Aqua is actually one of the few players that can confidently talk back to Venno when he makes a mistake. This dynamic between the two of them makes Venno better and better as a player, as he respects what Aqua says to him. And unsurprisingly, the season ended with them taking home the FNCS trophy, and the 300k that came with it. One of the most memorable aspects of Venno's gameplay was his ability to take out multiple opponents with seemingly no effort. His control under pressure and confidence in landing crucial shots made him a standout player, and whenever he played against even the best of players, it looked like he played a public Sonors game. That's how easy he made it look. Season 3 gave us C. Andy, a player who aim was so good that it became bittersweet. You see, C. Andy was a one-of-a-kind aimer, but for some reason he didn't take the game as seriously as other competitive players, and what this ultimately resulted in was him never reaching the kind of results his potential allowed for. Watching C. Andy play was like watching a prodigy who could outshine everyone, if he only had the focus to truly capitalize off his gifts. His aim was insane, to put it simply, from consistent max damage shotgun flicks to precise AR beams. C. Andy made everything regarding aiming look easy. He was the type of player you could put money on to hit that bailout max damage shot, even when it mattered most. Despite his ridiculous aim, C. Andy's lack of long-term discipline held him back. He easily could have been one of the best players in the world if he had channeled his talent into consistent practice. Instead, we're left wondering what could have been. Even so, his aim during Season 3 remains unforgettable earning him the spot as the best aimer of the season. In Season 4, Cold solidified himself as the best aimer of the chapter's final season. What made Cold so dangerous was how he combined ice-cold composure with pinpoint accuracy. He wasn't flashy, he was clinical. Cold's aim was at its peak during this season, and this was on full display during the 2022 Global Championships in North Carolina, where him and Scented landed one of the worst spots on the map, but were still able to take home 3rd and 120k thanks almost exclusively to Cold's ridiculous Crutches. So simply put it, what truly defined Cold as an aimer was his ability to stay calm no matter the stakes. Whether he was 1v2 in a crucial FNCS finals match, or casually wiping teams in public lobbies, his aim was always, without exception, on point. Cold wasn't just good, he was a blueprint for what an aimer should aspire to be in Fortnite. Chapter 3 introduced us to some of the most remarkable aimers Fortnite has ever seen. Each of these players dominated their respective seasons in ways that were both unique and unforgettable. Their precision, composure, and ability to rise above the competition cemented their legacies as some of the best aimers in Fortnite history. Now, moving on to chapter 4, it's time we talk about someone you were all waiting for, Thomas HD. Thomas is the greatest aimer Fortnite has ever seen, period. And if you watched any competitive during chapter 4 season 1, you would clearly see why he has that title. Known as one of the cleanest aimers in Fortnite's history, Thomas HD showcased a level of insanity during chapter 4 that has never since been matched. What made Thomas particularly deadly this season was his mastery of positioning. It wasn't just about landing shots, it was about how he set himself up to make them as effective as possible. Whether it was beaming players rotating into the zone, or delivering a max pump with the beautiful thunder pump shotgun, Thomas's aim felt like it came straight out of a laboratory. This season also saw him perform phenomenally in stacked lobbies, where his insane aim often turned the tide for his team in key moments. The level at which Thomas HD aims will probably never be matched, especially not if we're looking at his accuracy through the span of Season 1 of Chapter 4. Over to Season 2, Mero takes the title for Best Aimer. If there was ever a player you didn't want in your box, it was Mero. Mero is actually an incredibly interesting player to watch, as objectively speaking, you could argue that he is the best Fortnite player of all time. However, due to the fact that he's a controller player, I feel like people often overlook just how incredibly consistent he has been over the last multiple years. What sets Mero apart from every other controller player and 99% of Kibra Mouse players is how he knows the outcome of situations before they happen. His intuition in competitive games is unmatched, and that's why you'll often see him going for highly unorthodox plays, plays that 
in the eye of normal players might look super risky. But thanks to thousands of hours of experience, a tremendous amount of natural talent, and being smarter than anyone is willing to give a Fortnite player credit for, Mero makes it work, time and time again. In Season 3, Sweezy emerged as a surprise standout in the aiming department. While not as hyped as some of the bigger names, Sweezy's ability to land crucial shots in chaotic situations made him a player to watch. What I think separates Sweezy from the other top players is how much of a perfectionist he is. It seems as though he's able to always look for ways to play better, even when winning games. This is a skill that many other aspiring and even already pro players lack. He's also extremely consistent. Many of you watching may not know this, but Sweezy currently plays on EU, but started his competitive career over on Asia servers, an objectively easier region. Making the change from Asia over to EU and becoming the best on the much harder region requires an impressive amount of long-term effort and discipline. And Sweezy? Well, he could very well be the poster boy for those two characteristics. Chico was an absolute revelation in Season 4. This was a season where Chico truly stepped up and proved he was one of the deadliest aimers Fortnite has to offer. Chico was long the duo partner of the veteran player Trulex, and also the player responsible for most of the damage dealt in, so to say, all the games they played together. Chico and Trulex were a dynamic duo. Chico brought top tier aim, and Trulex brought his nearly unmatched experience and knowledge. This combination turned out to be deadly, as the underrated duo went on to win $400,000 at the 2023 Global Championships. That's 200k each, from only a few hours of playtime. Beyond just aim, Chico seemingly had all the confidence in the world. Watching him play, you got the sense that he never doubted his ability to win a fight or an endgame. That belief, paired with his incredible precision, made him the standout aimer of Season 4. In the nostalgia-fueled chaos of Chapter 4 Season OG, Tini stood out as the player who truly mastered the old school arsenal. With weapons like the Pump and Scar back in play, Teenie's aim shined brighter than ever. Teenie's standout quality during this season was his ability to control fights from start to finish by applying constant pressure. He never let his opponents breathe, not even for a second. Whether it was landing perfect headshots with a pump or tracking opponents like a laser with the ARs, he showcased a level of aim throughout the season that made this pick easy. Teenie is a controller player who has taken the competitive scene by storm, and in a similar way to Mero, he is able to make highly unorthodox plays work, against even the absolute best of the best. Teeny's aim is so good in fact that when he first started popping off, people were sure he was cheating. And these accusations weren't just made by some randoms on Twitter. No, actual pro players were convinced there was no chance he didn't cheat. If that's not one of the best compliments you can get as a Fortnite player, I don't know what is. At the chapter switch and start of chapter 5, the best aimer was Malabuka. Known for his fragging ability and mechanical mastery, Malabuka was hitting every shot that mattered, and he was especially unbelievable in endgames where he played alongside another contender for the title of best aim this season, Mustache. Malabuka has been someone to look up to skill-wise since he contested Mr. Savage in Steamy Stacks back in Chapter 2, and he has ever since only gotten better. Malabuka is one of the most calculated players ever, and when watching him play, you can just tell that he's so confident in his experience. A standout quality aim-wise for Malabuka is how he sets his opponents up to fail and give him an easy shot. The way he builds and edits is so effective that it often seems seems like he's fighting floppers, although he is fighting someone super high up on the PR leaderboards. In addition to this, he doesn't try to be flashy. You can tell by the way he plays that he only cares about one thing, and that is getting the job done. What this mentality results in is one of the cleanest playstyles worldwide, an aim most players globally only can dream of. Peterbot took over Season 2 with a level of accuracy that left the community in awe. If you needed someone to secure damage in a high pressure situation, Peterbot was the guy. His ability to combine aim with game sense made him a complete package, and his performances were nothing short of legendary. Peterbot's shotgun aim was particularly terrifying this season. Whether it was landing massive headshots in box fights or punishing opponents for poorly timed edits, he turned the meta into his playground. What set Peterbot apart was his consistency. He didn't just have one or two highlight moments. He dominated every single tournament he touched. It's not just about the shots he hit. It's about how often he hit him. Watching Peterbot in Season 2 felt like watching a highlight video. He was able to do chains of edits and then hit max damages more consistently than any other player on the planet. And that is also why recently he has become one of the most popular players Fortnite has ever seen. Poyo, Peterbot's duo, is often overlooked as a player because of how insane Peter is. But in Season 3, Poyo was surprisingly insane aim-wise. Now, don't get me wrong. 
He was in all seasons prior as well. But in my eyes, in season 3, Poyo was the best aimer worldwide. I've said this in a previous video, but I'll say it again. Poyo is someone who can create angles no one else can, give himself and the opponent an insanely difficult shot to hit, and literally always Poyo somehow hits that max damage. The way Poyo moves and the way he creates angles for himself is something no other player can do to the level he does it, not even Peter. I think the reason he is able to be the best in the world at exactly this is because he's one of the calmest players out there. He never stresses. Whether it be in an online grand finals or at the global championships, he's ice cold. And as a result, he takes home hundreds of thousands of dollars in earnings every single year. Season 4 saw Peter Bob return to the top as the undisputed best aimer of the season. While his mechanics and decision making were already world class, this season was where his aim shined brightest. Peterbot's ability to control fights through sheer accuracy both aim and mechanics wise was second to none, and his dominance wasn't confined to just one weapon or situation, he excelled across the board. What made Peterbot unstoppable this season was how he seamlessly combined aggression with precision. He didn't do a ton of builds and edits to miss like me and probably most of you watching do a little too often. He did set builds and edits and hit max damages, every time. Whether he was picking apart players in mid-game or clutching crucial eliminations in chaotic endgames, his aim never failed him. Watching Peterbaugh in Season 4 felt like witnessing a masterclass in Fortnite aiming. His ability to outgun anyone in a fair fight solidified his place as one of the best aimers not just of the season, but of Fortnite's history. In Chapter 5 Season OG, Vico stood tall as the ultimate aimer and his results speak for themselves. What sets Vico apart is how much it seems as though he loves the game. Whilst other players might find practice boring occasionally, Vico always plays against the other best players in the region with a smile on his face and the knowledge that every hour he puts in gets him further and further away from the competition. In terms of being better than them, that is. Vico has over the last few years developed into becoming one of the best players worldwide, and watching his journey has been both inspiring and motivating. If he keeps on grinding like he has in the past, it's only a matter of time before he sneaks his way into the conversation of greatest Fortnite player ever. Thanks for watching.